But now to a, no stress. Now to our new series, Stress Busters, helping you get you back into work mode without the anxiety. Well, this expert and our author, Kicking Sick, Amy Kurtz is here. So wonderful to have Amy back with us, along with Angela Benton. She is the author of Revival. We're gonna to speak to both of these women in a moment, but first, let's take a closer look at what stress really is. Stress is a part of life. Sometimes in small doses, it can be enjoyable, like riding a roller coaster, watching sports, or even a scary movie. It can help you perform better at work or during an athletic event, but too much stress can have harmful effects on the body. Now think of cooking. Without enough heat, the food remains raw and inedible, but too much heat and the food burns out. It's the same thing with your body and stress. The trick is to stay cool under fire. But what is stress anyway? Stress is any nonspecific demand placed upon the body. Any demand that makes the brain go, uh-oh, and, and jump into action. Stress triggers range from external things like problems at work or a family member's illness to internal issues like worry, fear, and self-doubt. Let's take a closer look inside the human body so you can see firsthand exactly what stress is. Stress begins and ends in the brain. When our brain notices something, then it signals to every organ in our body to turn on. Our heart beats faster, so we have the risk of high blood pressure. We release blood glucose into the system, so it increases the risk of diabetes. In a milder form, the stress response can help you concentrate and perform better. But when does stress become harmful? What really hurts people is the chronic stress. It increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, like having a heart attack or having a stroke, increases the risk of diabetes and high cholesterol. The good news is if you get in tune with what stresses you out, you can create a plan to manage stress and make it work for you. All right, so now we have a better understanding of stress. We want to find out how stressed our audience is. So we gave everyone a paddle. You have the words agree or disagree on either side. And so I want to ask you three questions and answer thusly. Do you consider yourself a workaholic? Do you consider yourself a workaholic? OK, all right, all right. Are you having trouble, put them down. Are you having trouble sleeping? Agree or disagree? Ooh, there are a lot of agrees with that one. Oh, a lot of disagrees. Oh, youngins, yeah, they don't. They, <laughs> oh, yeah, they're skewing it back there with those so young. And are you easily irritated? Are you easily irritated? What are you irritated about? You're like five years old. What do you have to be irritated about? But oh, but you see, it, it falls along not only gender but age. Okay, so we have what we call a stress o meter. So, ladies, let's see the stress o meter, and it kind of indicates that our audience is pretty moderate, kind of moderate when it comes to, nice, good for you guys, nice. And I, you know, I'm so glad that, that we're having this conversation. In fact, there's a new study out, and I want to make sure that we got out, get, get it correctly. Over a quarter of American workers say they do not have enough time to perform daily work tasks. 50% say they perform some work in their free time. So Amy, tell us what's going on here. Well, it's so important to start the conversation on stress because we are so overstimulated. We wake up in the morning and we're in go mode. Mm -hmm. And by the end of the day, when we get into bed, we're typically still in go mode. This puts our body in a state of fight or flight or survival. And when we're in the survival state, we aren't able to hear the body's signals to us telling us it's stressed, which could be overwhelm, anxiety, exhaustion. Various reasons. Yeah, irritability, et cetera. So it's so important that we create personal rituals for ourselves, like developing a meditation practice, taking three deep breaths to take a mini vacation for yourself, movement, an attitude of gratitude, whatever it is to give you the space to slow down so that you can tune out the outside world and all of its distractions mm -hmm. and tune in to your body and how you're feeling. I, I have believe, a firm belief in movement that you have to change your state and that really goes a long way. Totally. You, my friend, CEO of a tech company, mother of three, and it wasn't until you were diagnosed with cancer that you looked around and said, boy, I've got to change things. Yeah, I was one of those people that Amy was talking about. I was in go mode. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would wake up, I would be exhausted, but like like everyone, I would just drink coffee to like push myself through the day. I mean, sometimes 
I would go the whole day and have one meal, like a banana at breakfast. And I really just didn't have a lot of boundaries between my personal life and, and my professional life. And how did you change that? Well, one of the things that I did was I established a morning routine. So most of us have morning routines, but this morning routine is for me, nobody else. And um, I, I spend about two hours every morning just focusing on meditating, praying, things that are going to fill me up and make sure that I'm okay. Okay. And if your morning routine could, could uh, include Good Morning America, we would appreciate that as well. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, no, no stress, no stress. So let's, let's break it down here, beginning with our environment, Amy. So our environment is a piece of the puzzle for how we can de-stress and set ourselves up to survive, or I mean thrive and not just survive. Mm -hmm. So you want to think about your home as your sanctuary or what I like to call your zen den. So it's important to bring in decorations that make you feel happy and serene, um, choose muted colors, create a space that really sets you up for restorative rest. And that's really important. And then you have your office, which most of us have to work, but what we don't realize is that we have a lot more power over our environment than we think. So it's important to create your office to be a happy space. This means bringing in meaningful objects that bring you warmth when you see them, things that pique your imagination and keep you moving forward, like a good piece of art or an inspirational quote. How about plants? Well, plants have a lot of power. They have proven health benefits. They're really good air purifiers, and they're very calming. So bringing in soothing nature into somewhat sterile environment is really good for us. And you can also throw in some fresh flowers. They're beautiful to look mm. at, but the power of aromic scent can change your mood in yeah. one sniff. And what, is your, what are your suggestions, Angela? So like I said, establish a selfish morning routine where you focus on yourself. And these are, it doesn't really have to be meditating or prayer. If you like working out, it's whatever that's beneficial for you. And the second thing is a mindful to-do list. I think we're all familiar probably with making to-do lists, but we usually make them for our business life or our personal life. Mm -hmm. I recommend making two, one for business and one for personal. And include things on your personal to-do list like talking to your parents, going out with friends, reading a book, things that are good for your own personal development that allow you to uncharge and, you know, from work. Yeah, unplug. unplug. Angela, Amy, great to see you again. Thank you both so much. Glad that you're doing as well as you are you. with Thank your you. journey. Thank you.